During a rainy evening, an ambulance drives to the hospital carrying a pregnant woman who was struck by lightning. Later, the pregnant woman, identified as Anna, is pronounced dead. The doctor informs Anna's husband, Greg, about her death along with the news that their baby survived after a premature birth. However, the baby was born with a congenital condition called albinism, causing him to have pale skin and pale eyes that are usually more light sensitive. Greg demands to see the baby and the doctor leads him to a newborn intensive care unit. Inside, Greg watches as the baby's brain waves are being measured. He relieves Greg that they are doing everything they can to keep the baby alive. However, Greg does not feel any affection for the baby. He cries in torment and disowns the baby in an instant. Just then, the baby cries as his brainwaves turn to a very high frequency. A few more doctors arrive at the scene to check on the baby before they assist Greg out of the room. Years later, the baby, who is named Jeremy Reed, is brought up by his grandparents in a rural Texas town. Jeremy was nicknamed Powder because of his noticeable pale and hairless appearance. He never left the place until one day the police come to their property. It was reported now that Jeremy's grandfather died just the night before because of natural causes. He is without family. The police officers, led by the town sheriff Doug Barnum, attempt to make Powder come out of the basement, but he won't budge. Sheriff Doug does not use force towards Powder and instead calls the child psychologist Jesse Caldwell to assist them. Jesse arrives at the farmhouse where the two of them come down to the basement. She introduces herself while calmly calls out to Powder. The basement is wide but dark, looking similar to a library because of the numerous shelves filled with books. After a while, Powder emerges from the dark as Jesse and Doug take a look at him for the first time. Doug relieves Powder, saying that he is not in trouble while Jesse reaches her hand out to the teen. Jesse requests Doug to prepare food for Powder and he leaves the two of them to talk. She then asks Powder why he did not report about his grandfather's death himself. Powder replies, talking about his grandfather's warning, wherein people out there will come and take him away if he does. While Powder eats, Jesse explores around the basement, noticing his books and scientific projects. Jesse takes a literature book from a shelf and shows it to Powder, asking him if he has read it. In response, Powder tells her to pick a page, to which he brilliantly recites the lines on the page word per word. When she asks Powder about the last time he went to school, Powder replies that he has never been to school, but that he knows everything from all his books. Powder also reveals that aside from reading, he helps in working around the farmhouse until before sunrise, and that he wears sunglasses during daytime to protect his light-sensitive eyes. Later, Jesse manages to convince Powder to leave his grandparents' farmhouse. He comes up from their basement with his luggage, wearing his sunglasses. Outside, Sheriff Doug waits for him along with Deputy Harley Duncan and a few police officers. At the same time, Powder is revealed to have other abilities and these begin to manifest while he walks out of the farmhouse. He is able to sense Jesse's thoughts, revealing that she is afraid of how the other people will treat him. The powerful electromagnetic charge of his brain also causes electronic devices to operate abnormally when he is around them. Powder rides in Jesse's car and leaves as the police continue to look around the house. Harley and Doug notice a number of lightning rods on the roof of their house, beginning to suspect that there could be something more to Powder's condition other than his albinism. As Jesse drives around the city, Powder becomes fascinated by the surroundings and fiddles with the window buttons. She brings Powder to an all-boys orphanage where he will be under foster care. During dinner, he sits alone on a table where the young boys there stare at him, treating him as an outcast. A group of young boys led by the bully John Box approaches Powder on his table while he eats. John displays troublesome behavior towards Powder. They force him to do a tradition for newcomers, wherein he should stick a spoon on any part of his body. Powder watches them and does not talk back, but in response, he uses his powerful brainwaves to manipulate all the utensils in the dining area, forming a pyramid with the spoons. The young boys freeze in shock while Powder grins, feeling satisfied. Meanwhile, Sheriff Doug comes home 
and finds his estranged son, Stephen, at the entrance of their house. They briefly stare at each other before Stephen leaves the house and drives away. Inside, Doug's sick wife Emma is confined to the bed while Maxine, their house helper, watches over her. Maxine talks about Stephen's visit, saying that his son's presence is more effective than Emma's medications. She gives Doug the silver box that came from Stephen, placing it on Emma's nightstand, then opens up on the rumors in their neighborhood regarding Powder and expresses her fear toward the teen. While Maxine calls Powder mentally defective, Doug ignores her as he believes that he is not. The next day, Dr. Duane Roth, one of the resident doctors, checks on Powder's health status while under Jesse's supervision. He informs them that aside from the absence of any and all his body hair, Powder is very healthy. When he leaves, Jesse informs Powder that she has consulted an optometrist to provide contact lenses for his pale eyes. She also offers to enroll Powder in Wheaton High School, saying that it is a good place for him to study and interact with other people. Powder agrees on attending school, but makes sure that he receives his contact lenses before going. On his first day, he quickly catches the attention of the students as nearly everyone in the school stares at him. During physics class, Powder meets his teacher, Donald Ripley, in which he discusses molecules. He explains that human beings are made up of a mass of molecules and that the brain sends out electric impulses to all the other body parts. In the middle of the class, Powder meets his classmate Lindsay Kellaway, who keeps glancing at him. Donald continues, demonstrating to the class how electricity travels using a device called Jacob's Ladder. The device emits a small current of electricity until it slowly buzzes louder. Suddenly, Powder begins to shake as strong electric waves travel toward his body, electrocuting him. The class stares in shock, while Donald destroys the device to stop the electricity flow. Powder loses consciousness, and Donald slightly shivers upon touching him. Later, Powder is taken to the hospital, and Dr. Roth reveals that he does not have a single scratch on him. Doug and Harley head to the hospital after the incident, where they find Donald talking to the medical personnel. Doug approaches Donald and asks for his statement about what happened to Powder in the classroom. Donald explains that Powder has attracted the electricity not only from the Jacob's Ladder, but from the whole building. He further speculates that a single hair can't grow on Powder because of the electromagnetic power that lingers within his body. Just then, a nurse notifies them that Powder has left his room and the police head out to find him. Meanwhile, Powder flees from the hospital and stumbles upon a dog. The dog, revealed to be Lindsay's pet, aggressively barks at Powder in the backyard, but it instantly softens at Powder's touch. Soon, Lindsay hurriedly runs outside their house and sees Powder. She befriends him as the two of them briefly talk outside her house with her dog. Lindsay explains that she has been previously staring at Powder because of a bet with her friend regarding the color of his eyes. Powder removes his contact lenses in front of Lindsay, showing him his real eye color. The two notice how the neighbors judgingly stare at them, but they later ignore. They part ways as Powder walks alone toward the train tracks, attempting to retreat in his grandparents' farmhouse. At the end of the tracks, he is later cornered by Sheriff Doug and Deputy Harley. Harley tries to intimidate Powder, but in return, Powder senses Harley's thoughts, including his fear towards him. Doug encourages him to go back to the orphanage, but Powder refuses, insisting that the orphanage is not his home. After much convincing, Doug gets Powder to ride in his police vehicle and talk about his memories. Powder expresses his strong dislike for hospitals, mainly because it is the place where he was born, reminding him of his worst day. As he continues with the story, Doug realizes that Powder clearly recalls the memories from his birth, causing him to react questioningly. Later, Jesse accompanies Powder in an office with Donald and the members of the State Board of Education, led by Dr. Aaron Stripler. Through the recommendation of Jesse, Powder has taken an IQ test where they discover that he has the most advanced intellect in the history of humankind. The board members interview him regarding his educational background and study habits. Powder admits that he only reads books and could never listen to a radio or watch television. Donald opens the television and it releases a screeching sound implying that the television is unable to operate near the presence of Powder. Later, Powder sees through the thoughts of Dr. Stripler, who speculates that he has cheated on his IQ test. Nonetheless, 
Powder does not care about this and instead requests them to take him home to his grandparents' house. However, Jesse informs him that he cannot simply come back to their farmhouse because the bank owns most of their property now. Powder is saddened by her answer and walks out of the office. A new day arrives, Powder attends a hunting trip with his schoolmates from the orphanage as he is being carefully watched by the students and officials. Doug approaches him on a corner, telling him about Jesse and her sincere efforts in helping him. They hear a thunder rumble, and Powder tells Doug that he can feel the thunderstorm inside him. Doug again listens to him in confusion, as Powder claims to have vivid memories ever since he was born. The next day, while Powder explores the forest, he senses the presence of his schoolmates John and Mitch hiding from him. John calls him a freak and aims his hunting rifle towards Powder when suddenly they hear a gun go off nearby. The three of them approach the sound and find that Deputy Harley has shot a deer. While the rest of them celebrate his hunt, Powder agonizes over the dying deer. He touches both Harley and the deer at the same time, and it produces a seizure-looking effect toward Harley. John and the young boys force Powder away from Harley, and Powder lets go of Harley's hand before weeping in front of the dead deer. Right after the hunting incident, Powder is summoned to Jesse's office while she and Doug talk to him. Powder tries to explain that he did not attack Harley, but Doug and Jesse cannot seem to understand him. As soon as Doug leaves the office, Powder becomes even more emotional. He complains to Jesse that she is not being a real friend and insists that he wants to go back to his grandparents' home. His strong emotions manifest as the glasses inside break and her entire office goes dark. Meanwhile, Doug returns to his house after a call from Maxine. Inside his home, a doctor checks up on his bedridden wife and informs him that his wife is dying but cannot seem to let go for some reason. The doctor casually blurts out that it would be helpful if someone could read into the mind of his wife as Doug suddenly remembers Powder. At the same time, Powder has left Jesse's office and he sulks inside a classroom. Donald approaches him to talk, where he opens up how his brain gained more focus after their previous physical encounter during physics class. Donald engages Powder in a discussion, slowly approaching him as he talks about Einstein. He explains about Einstein's belief that if people ever got to the point where they could use all their brain, then everyone would be turned into pure energy and no longer need bodies. Powder listens closely to Donald as he continues to discuss, saying that Powder is closer to that energy level more than anybody. Powder is unconcerned by the thought, but Donald tries to make him realize how much potential his brain has in achieving great things. Donald tells Powder that he wants to befriend him, offering his assistance in knowing more about the real world. Powder refuses him at first, but Donald reaches out his hand and the two of them shake hands. He tells Donald that even his grandparents were afraid to touch him and Donald becomes saddened by the thought. His gesture makes Powder smile and he playfully relays a static toward Donald, making his hair strands rise up. The following day, Doug visits Harley in his house, discovering that his hunting firearms inside have been discarded. Harley meets him, looking helpless as he tells Doug that he has stopped hunting. He explains to Doug his experience during the incident with Powder, admitting that his touch made him feel the fear and pain of the dying deer. Through Harley's testimony, Doug takes Powder to his home and asks for his help in sensing the thoughts of his dying wife, Emma. As Powder slowly approaches Emma, Maxine steps in to interrupt them, but Doug shushes her and closes the room. Powder stares at Doug's wife and touches her head to communicate with her. Through his telepathic abilities, Powder relays to Doug that Emma cannot go until she knows that Doug and his son Stephen will reconcile. She also communicates to Powder about her lost ring, which she longs to wear on her finger. The two discover that the long-lost ring was found by Stephen and has been sitting inside the silver box the entire time. Emma begins to weep while Powder continues to communicate her thoughts to Doug. She dies peacefully as soon as Doug wears the ring on her finger. Just then, Maxine has called Stephen over to their house, telling him about Powder. Doug greets Stephen on the entrance and embraces him, signifying their reconciliation. Powder and Lindsay spend time in a carnival a few days after. They ignore the stares of the people around them as Lindsay curiously asks Powder how people are like on the inside. 
Powder explains that he can see the truth in every person, that even if they confuse the truth with lies and sarcasm, he sees that they feel disconnected and scared. He reaches his fingertips toward Lindsay, letting her feel his thoughts while they touch. Lindsay and Powder grow closer with each other. Just then, Lindsay's father shows up and interrupts the two of them. Her father is angered at their closeness, causing him to grab Powder's collar. Jesse witnesses this and runs to stop Lindsay's father. He warns Powder to stay away from her daughter before he walks out with her. Powder returns to the orphanage and decides to leave the place, packing his belongings. While walking away, he curiously enters a gymnasium and catches sight of John and a few boys playing basketball. He stares at a young man who is washing himself, noticing the hair all over his body, something which he lacks. He gets caught by John while staring, accusing him of being a pervert. John steals Powder's hat and ridicules him. But in return, Powder sees through John's memories, revealing to everyone in the gym the hurtful words told to John by his stepfather. Powder angers John, causing him to be dragged out of the gym before pushing him onto the muddy water. Mitch tries to stop John from humiliating Powder any further, but Powder's abilities begin to show up as he pulls at the metal objects on their bodies, including their buttons and piercings. Soon after, a huge electromagnetic force breaks out, and its impact throws Powder back into the muddy puddle while John and the boys land on the ground. They notice John lying lifeless, and Powder successfully revives him using an electric shock. As soon as John wakes up, Mitch urges Powder to get out of the place. Later, Powder is able to return to his grandparents' farmhouse as Mitch sneaks him inside a pickup truck. He enters his home, discovering that all of their possessions have been already removed. Powder later walks down to the empty basement as Jesse soon arrives at the farmhouse to look for him. Jesse joins Powder inside the empty basement, brightening his mood by telling him that they will track his belongings, including all his books. She also convinces Powder that he deserves to be in a much better place and pulls him into a hug. At this time, Jesse realizes that Wheaton City is not a good place for Powder. She decides to bring him to some place outside the city where he will no longer be judged and misunderstood. Not long after, Donald follows them to the farmhouse to help with their escape, but Sheriff Doug and Deputy Harley arrive to interrupt them. Doug tries to stop Jessie from her plans, reminding her that what she is doing is against the law. After their discussion, Donald and Jessie end up convincing Doug to blindly turn his head away and let them leave. Doug pulls Harley, telling him to drive away the farmhouse. However, Harley is firm on not letting them break the law. As he attempts to report the incident to their station, Doug and Donald destroy his radio. Harley exclaims his annoyance, telling them that they have all gone absurd as he heads to the radio in his police vehicle to report them. Meanwhile, the weather turns bad in the city as thunder begins to rumble. Under the inclement weather, Powder briefly converses with Doug, he informs Doug that Emma may be dead, but she will always be just around, watching him and their family, bringing Doug to tears. Donald looks at Powder and expresses his admiration for the albino teen. Donald shares a quote by Albert Einstein, stating that technology has surpassed humanity. Through his encounter with Powder, he has come to believe that someday it will be the other way around, wherein humanity might actually surpass technology. Afterwards, Powder gives them one last look before he runs toward the grassy meadows. Harley, Jesse, Donald, and Doug all cluelessly run after him. During this time, Powder has come to a realization that his home is not his grandparents' farmhouse, not Wheaton City, and ultimately not on the earth. As Powder chases on the emerging thunder, he attracts a lightning bolt and it strikes him. He opens his arms wide and lets the thunder take his body. The powerful impact of the lightning brings an electrical jolt hitting the four of them while Powder's earthly body disappears. Donald, Jesse, Doug, and Harley are staring at the sky after Powder vanishes as they speculate that Powder has transcended the earth and turned into energy.